Well, we are almost completely packed. Got almost everything in there. We have a flight tomorrow at 7 a.m. So we leave tomorrow for the mainland where we wait another 24 hours for the train that we take up to Copper Canyon. So this is Mexico's version of the Grand Canyon apparently. So yes. it's kind of been a bucket list item and tomorrow we get to start the journey towards it. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Trish? Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Let's do this. Alright. Santiago's on his way. Train time. Trains, planes, and automobiles. And Taramaras. All board! All board! All board! And elevators. And yes. elevators. There's our train. How many people are on the train? In first class, you'll be traveling with 17. The Ferrocarril Chihuahua Al Pacifico, also known as El Chepe, is a major train line in northwest Mexico. Operating since 1961, it is the only passenger train in the country. Linking Chihuahua City to Los Mochis, El Chepe covers 405 miles of track through the majestic landscape of Mexico's western coast. Car of the 
again is the terrace, it's a closet for us. In the terrace is the bar, so you can ask for alcoholic or not. First class, baby. Along the nearly 700 kilometers of railway, there are about 15 stops, mostly consisting of small villages of Mexican's oldest native communities. Just a handful of these stops attract tourists. However, the El Chepe train is not an easy trip, logistically speaking, and far from any main touristy destinations, making it very attractive to those who desire the road less traveled and like the off the beaten path experience. We were a Fortunato to be aboard the legendary locomotive during these bizarre times, and even more lucky to practically have the whole train to ourselves, with a touch of first-class thrills in the open-air viewing car. It was great getting to do some inland exploration and get a taste of the Mexican culture, also getting away for the boat for a few days. Only a couple hours into the trip, we felt like kids again, awing over the impressiveness of the train and the scenery. The Copper Canyon train is a stunning piece of engineering achievement. It crosses over some of Mexico's most rugged terrain and is one of the lesser known gems. The railroad marvel took almost 90 years and $90 million to complete. We started the adventure at sea level and slowly gained elevation as we approached the western Sierra Madre Mountains towards the Copper Canyon. From sea level, the train climbs to an elevation of 7,900 feet and along the way, we were able to pass over 39 bridges. <laughs> 86 tunnels. <laughs> and countless breathtaking views. The journey's real claim to fame is passing through the Copper Canyon, and since we were just now entering the canyon itself at night, we had to patiently wait until the return journey in a couple of days. Well, <laughs> it was pretty cold. We just went from sea level to about 85,000 feet. It's about 30 degrees right now. We just got into Creel at 10.30 at night. It was an awesome train ride and we're excited to do when we go back because we're going to see it during the day. So a totally different uh, perspective, but oh, I'm cold. <laughs> there they are. There's are coming in. <laughs> oh my god. It is winter. I'm so cold. I'm so, 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 so cold. Yeah. We were thrilled to see that the hotel sent for a car to pick us up so late at night and bring us back to the hotel, only to find out that we could have walked from the train station. But we were beyond grateful because we were too cold to even think or walk. Good night, honey. Oh, God, it's cold. It's cold here. We're staying at the Logic Creole, but we're gonna take a little tour today. 
there are some limitations to what's going on obviously with coronavirus not everything's open the bars are closed the liquor stores are closed not that that's a priority so all the fun is no closed. but um we're still going to take a little tour to kind of go see an indian village as well and part of the canyon um but it's much colder than it is over by the boat it certainly is a lot colder yeah i mean it's pretty this is creole <laughs> It's a little, little town High up at in the, the mountains. rim of the, the Mexico's Copper Grand Canyon, Copper Canyon. Yeah, We're going to try and do our best to see as much as we can today. Town, as long as everything rim, is open, that is allowed. Yeah, there's not much open. Not much open. It's kind of a ghost Here's town. a plus. Traveling now. Not a lot of people not around. Not a lot of people around, <laughs> which is great. It's ideal. Um, but things are limited. Yeah. Even despite the current limitations, it was great to get out and see different places and experience different parts of Mexico. Our day started by walking around Main Street, which didn't take much time given its half-mile block stretch. Creole is historically a lodging town and has seemingly been overrun by packs of dogs. Very friendly, but certainly their town. The town has more than just wandering packs of dogs, of course. Tourism, with an exception to now, has become the primary job source over the last 20 years due to the train attraction and most notably the indigenous people of the Americas. This is Alicia. Alicia. <laughs> Mucho gusto, Alicia. Yeah. <laughs> the Tarahumara, or Ramramuri, the running people tribes, live among the hills and caves in the Sierras. They are a shy people and are renowned for their long distance running ability. Unfortunately, we didn't witness the speed that they were reputably known for, or maybe they were just too fast for us to see. But we did have some interactions with the women and children who seemed to be the face of the people, selling their goods along the road and nearby villages. How old are you? Although timid, they have grown accustomed to the tourists visiting and profit from their skills in basket weaving. This, along with many other crafts, are made on the spot. They weave baskets made of long needles from the local pines, dyed from other natural tints from the lands they live on. The sale of their crafts bring in much needed money for food, so it became pretty aware to us that our being there meant that they could have a meal for that day. The vast ruggedness of the countryside has kept the Tarahumara and the wild canyons themselves insulated from the influences of modern society. We were fortunate to witness a little glimpse into their livelihoods and try to imagine ourselves living as they do. There is a gentleness in their eyes that contrasts their rough environments to the way they live, putting us to shame really on whimpering about the cold. The Copper Canyon, or Barrancas del Cobre in Spanish, is lesser known compared to the Grand Canyon in the United States, but it may be even grander in size. The canyon system has been deemed the largest in the world and twice as deep as the Grand Canyon. It is a dramatic and forbiddingly attractive landscape, spanning 65,000 square kilometers in size. The canyons were formed by six rivers that drain the western side of the Sierra Tarahumara, a part of the Sierra Madre Occidental. All six rivers merge into the Rio Fuerte and empty into the Gulf of California. The walls of the canyon are copper and green in color, giving it the origin of the name. In one of the main key train stops, a small village, Divisadero, is a vista point with amazing views down into the Urique Canyon of the Barracas del Cobre. With only a day to visit the area before jumping back on the train again, we were sure to try and cover as much ground as possible, driving around the surrounding parts of Creole, visiting all the little pueblos of the Tarahumaras.
The land and geological formations of this region are reminiscent of much of what we have seen and experienced while traveling throughout the southwest of the U.S. But this place still has the native people of the lands, and in fact, the Tarahumara people who live on these lands to this day were never conquered by the Spanish conquistadors or any others for that matter. Probably because they couldn't find them. Our time in Creole was short but sweet and was a drastic change to our time on the boat. We had an early morning departure and were ready to return to a warmer climate. Can you smell it? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm ready to get back to the boat. <laughs> Baby can't handle it anymore. <laughs> one, one day, one day in the mountains, man, I'm, that's enough. I can't feel my nose. It's like. No, I mean, I know it's there. I could touch it, but I can't feel it. <laughs> you never think that we grew up in the mountains. Nope. <laughs> Nobody would know that now. <laughs> oh, we got a little doggy at school. Hey, doggy. <laughs> Where's the train station? Take us to the train station. The next and last stop of our adventures was the town of El Fuerte. 
A short bus ride from the station, this colorful Pueblo Magico is an old colonial town situated next to the river that feeds the rivers of the Sierras to the Sea of Cortez. El Fuerte served as a gateway to the vast frontiers of the northern territories of Sonora, Arizona, and California. After a long train journey, we were ready to relax and enjoy the amenities of our next hotel. Posada del Hidalgo, normally busy and full of guests, essentially became our little private oasis in the middle of the desert. We were recommended to stay here by my dad, who had visited a couple years prior, and his recommendation was spot on. The Posada del Hidalgo is a stunning, beautiful colonial mansion, and is believed to be the original site and birthplace of Diego de la Vega. El Zorro. This is an incredible hotel. You can just imagine being here 200 years ago, and, well, it's 150 years old. <laughs> you can definitely feel like you are back in time. Super classic Spanish colonial type of architecture. And it just feels like you've stepped back in time. It's amazing. We're at a Zorro, Zorro, Zorro hotel. Wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> We're about halfway through our trip. We're at a new hotel. Yes. It's beautiful. It's warmer. They have a pool. We're going to go to it. It's gorgeous. I don't think I was expecting this of El Forte. No. This is just incredible. No. Really old, beautiful hotel. And it's the resting place of Zorro, the original um, Zorro. The history of Zorro started here. That's what it is. Beautiful place. So we get to check this out for the next two days. And then we have another travel day before going back to the boat. So that's what we're doing. Oh, you got me on the spot, Johnny. Yeah, so I think we should go have a drink by the bar. By the pool. Should have a drink by the pool. And the pool is by the bar. And the pool's by the bar, luckily. <laughs> So something we've learned while having a drink is that during dinner they put on a Zorro show. So I'm not sure exactly what that means, but I've been sent to the room to get the camera so that we can film this and see what it's all about. So probably it's pretty Robin cool. And so like Robin Hood. People recognize that person because under the mask, the nose, the mouth, and the chin and body, he was Diego de la Vega, the same children, the same child who was born in this village in that that cold year in the 1795. So welcome, folks, to the place where the real one sort of was born. She is a mother. She is a mother. También nos Let me have a look, another drink. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Toma el martini, baby. Ay, ay, ay. Muchos dólares. Muchos dólares. Tú, taromada. Se me hace que gastas dinero en todo, baby. Whatever you say. Whatever you say. It's working. Se me hace cumbia para ella. There is a cumbia for you, señorita, from this state, from Sinaloa. This is a beautiful cumbia for her. Thank you for watching this long special episode of our Inland Adventures. If you liked it, please let us know. Give us a thumbs up and maybe even consider becoming one of our patrons. Remember, you're not paying for our adventure, but think of it as the next best thing to a Netflix subscription. Cheers!